Well, what's up, everybody? How you doing? Dave Fenoy here. Another Wednesday, and here we are with another Ask Dave Fenoy Anything. Uh, are you staying dry? Of course, this is all over the place, so not just here in L.A., uh, but I know it's raining in New York because I talked to my sister today, and she said it's cold and rainy there. I said, oh, well, our, our weather's match today. But I uh, hope you're staying dry and uh, warm, and uh, your world is wonderful. Uh, welcome in. Thank you so much for stopping by. Uh, Want to let you know all the Ask Dave Fenoy Anythings live on my YouTube channel, Dave Fenoy VoiceOver Training. If there's an episode you miss, somebody told you, oh man, last week you just should have. Well, you can go to my YouTube channel and uh, you can see them all, uh, 24-7, 365. And uh, if you're interested in coaching with me, DaveFenoy.com, click on the Study VO tab at the top. And uh, you can book yourself for uh, one session. Uh, you can get 15 minutes if that's all you need, half an hour, an hour, five sessions, 10 sessions, 20 sessions. And, of course, <laughs> uh, bulk uh, saves money. Uh, my Twitter page to follow me is at Dave Fenoy. And I got some fans here that aren't necessarily voiceover people. But they're uh, fans of my work that pop in, so let me say hello. Stacy, the Walking Dead game fan. How you doing? Good to see you. Uh, and there is Nathan, oh, the Mixels fan. Not a lot of people know about uh, the cartoon Mixels that I did where I even had to sing back when I still kind of sort of had a singing voice. Anyway, enough of that. Let's get right... Oh, something in my eye. Let's get right to my guest. Um... Uh, Amazing guy. There he is, David Rosenthal. <laughs> How are you, David? Good to see you, man. Oh, man, you too, Dave. I'm doing really well. I, I've always loved your intro music, you know, and the only thing missing from that is like a little bit of uh, Billy David Ocean to introduce that song. Uh, and uh, tell me, uh, oh, uh, uh, you're going to go there. there. Immediately. Uh, so uh, that is what, you know. You go ahead. Tell us, I, tell I was going to say, for those notions. who don't know, and I, I think it's been uh, mentioned often enough, um, I uh, in a former life, I was a disc jockey. Uh, I was up in San Francisco, worked at a few different stations up there, but uh, people know me best as a morning man at KDIA and then KSOL, uh, uh, which was uh, the number one music station in town, and I was the morning maniac. Uh, talked a lot of shit and uh, had a lot of fun, played a lot of great R&B uh, music. Um, and how come you know that story? <laughs> I know that story because I was in San Francisco at the same, same time that Dave was. Oh, well, and, and so while I'm tooling around in my car, you know, Mr. Billy David Ocean comes on. And I mean, it, it's so funny because I did not know, and why should I? that that was Mr. David Fenoy at the time. I just, you know, it was a different, well, whole different person there. Yeah. Right? Yep. Oh, but, on the radio. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, uh, I started voiceover up there, and I was working doing voiceover also as Billy David Ocean because, you know, the tie-in from the station. But when I moved to L.A., I said, you know what? I want my name back. So yeah, uh, got it back. Yeah, and, uh, and you got it back. Yes, yes. Yeah, but yes. it it was it was fun because we were both. I think you know you and I both were uh, making it happen in voiceover up in San Francisco um, around the same time. Uh, you and I both spent a little bit of time. Well, I grew up back east uh, in D.C. area, and you were in college out there, so oh, we kind of trailed each other little bits here and there, right? No, that's that's you so know? true. That's so true. So now, where did you start? In, in Northern California, who did you work with? Who did you train with? Or did you? Right. I never trained with anybody up there um, because I was just ready to go. I, I had actually gotten my uh, uh, bachelor's in uh, at Sarah Lawrence in New York, uh, up up New York. Uh, West, uh, so you were one of the first uh, guys to go to Sarah Lawrence. Yeah, I was actually not. I mean, not one of the first guys, but the ratio was pretty pretty wild. Even when I was going that there, must it was have fun. Been wonderful. I had, I had a good time. I yeah, definitely had a good I know time. you did. And uh, and uh, you know, so I got my acting chops there, uh, and then went into the city in New York City. Uh, I was doing mostly on camera stuff, 
um, but that city can be cruel to you. <laughs> uh, you have to have a lot of money. And as a, you know, the old starving actor thing, when you don't, uh, it can be even more cruel. So I, I, um, while I had some, you know, definite successes, there were also some kind of crushing, uh, crushingly crushing hard blows that flows that happened. So, um, you know, I moved out to San Francisco as a way to just clear my head and try to, you know, get back to the basics again. And that's actually where it all started happening for me. So no, I didn't, I did not train uh, when I got to San Francisco. I ended up with a fantastic agent, who was uh, your Mary Tonry, Mary Tonry, Tonry oh. Talent. Um, and, you know, she, and it's so funny because, you know, people like Mary Tonry, because, you know, they've heard of like stars and look and, and best and all those guys, which I took little turns at, but I never gelled with them. It, it, it's um, interesting. Uh, San Francisco's, uh, I don't know if it's still that way, but at the time you could have multiple agents in town. So I was with stars and look. Yep. Uh, yep. and, um, Joan Spangler. So you, Joan, it, look, yeah. She, she was I, my first I, agent. She's right. the one that brought me in. Um, uh, she, when I first sent my demo, it was, you know, two or three months before they got back to me and I went in for my interview and said, well, you know, your demo sucks. I mean, you're talented, <laughs> but your demo sucks. It's too long, yeah. too much retail. Uh, come back and see me in six months. Ah! <laughs> wow. Well, I know. And, you know, Joan was one of my first agents, uh, too. Um, and you know what? I don't think a lot of people knew what to do yet with, uh, with demos back then. Yeah. I mean, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't clear what agents or casting directors really wanted back then. Um, so it's easy. It was easy for an agent to say, this isn't what I want, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, and there you had to go and and trial by trial and error find out what was what was really happening and how to make that work. But um, you know, I did and a they, lot of and the industry was so too. much smaller then. Oh, so much smaller. We, you know, I, I hate to say this to everybody, but it really was the golden age. I mean, it was the golden age because we were all big fish in a small sea. There was always enough work for us, and it paid better. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. And, I'm just going to uh, say one name, Denny Delk. Oh, Denny. Oh, tell me about <laughs> it. Denny and I, I have, I still, I could play right now. If I could share, I could play you stuff that Denny and I were on together. And one of the things, Dave, that used to happen all the time that I loved, it doesn't happen hardly as much anymore, just because of everybody in their home and their booth is when you have um, dialogue commercials or ensemble commercials where, and like people like Sam Pond, he would bring people in, he would have like a skeleton idea of a commercial and he'd let us riff. Yeah. And he'd say, and, and we'd find the, the rhythm, we'd find the words and he'd say, keep that, keep that. And he cut and paste and we had a commercial at yeah. the end of the day. It was beautiful. It, it was, was really beautiful. Wonderful. Uh, very yeah. different than the world we're living in now. And I'm not gonna say better or worse, just different. Um, Very different. You and didn't that's kind to, of, you did yeah. nobody had their own home studio. Uh, no. <laughs> you went to your agents to audition. You went to somebody yep. else's studio to work. Um, it was, and there just weren't that many of us. Not that I'm saying there's too many of us now, uh, but they're also, they're, <laughs> There also can I say that? Yeah, you can, <laughs> but don't. Uh, there, but this is a bigger business now. There's so many uh, voiceover huge. jobs now that didn't exist then, so right. uh, it it Very had true. to get bigger. And then, of course, with Don LaFontaine, and what, what's he making? Thirty, forty thousand dollars a day. I let me let me get a piece of that. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. So yeah, no, it it, it was a it was very different. Um, and I think that. Uh, uh, that sense of community where you would go in for an audition and you'd see your other, you know, VO brothers and sisters, and you could hang with them uh, while you were waiting your turn. <laughs> you did hang the with them. <laughs> yeah, right. And uh, and you'd sometimes you'd go into the booth with them because it was a dialogue commercial, and you got, you know, it got very nice and personal. And sometimes you'd go out for a 
drink afterwards and catch up and see what was going on with their lives or their families. And, and that sense of community was very important, which is kind of, I know this is leading into it, but it's kind of the way GVA gets, got started. Okay. Um, and we're, we're going to talk about yeah. GVA in, yeah. in a little bit. So yeah. uh, you were doing your thing in San Francisco. When did you come to LA? Um, about, it's only been about seven years, <coughs> seven years now. Um, I was, everything was working out fine in San Francisco until my uh, divorce and that wasn't working out fine. And then, you know, so when it was like time to, we had, we sold our house in, in, uh, St. Francis woods and everything. And I was like, well, where am I going to live now? And I'm my two get kids, as far away from this woman as possible. <laughs> Well, that's it. It was interesting. I was like, I don't want to be seeing her on the street, all that stuff. And then my two kids lived uh, here in LA and they said, come and look, come down here. And Dad, was we'll like, take you in. <laughs> exactly. Right. Uh, poor guy needs a little consolation. But, um, you know, it was interesting because at that point, Dave, my kids were my home. Yeah. I didn't really, right. I didn't really have a home. And they were inviting me into the city that they loved. And, and, you know, I got shown in LA that was so different from the LA that I, that I got to, you know, that you we thought LA was in San Francisco. Exactly. I saw a complete, you know, salt of the earth people, wonderful hikes in the, you know, up in the canyons and stuff. I, it was great. And I yeah. said, well, I'm let's do this. And as soon as they came down, Luckily, and very fortunately, you know, I, all I had to, you know, because of the book of work that I've had, over, that I had over 25 years up there, or 20 years up there, I got an agent, and I was welcomed by the voiceover community, and it just took off from there. It was great. I'm going to throw another name out here. Joe Paulino. Oh, of course. Yeah. Okay. Good, good buddy you. of mine. When I moved Look down here, when I was commuting every week. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, starting in 1990 for about eight or nine months uh joe and i had an apartment down here in la uh and <laughs> he, was, he was going to be doing the same thing i was doing he ended up not doing as much and he was doing just fine up there uh yeah but wow i i bet you know we're not going to spend the whole time talking about people that we <laughs> toby gleason and uh popping up other names yeah toby oh, gleason oh, right oh, of other people in the voiceover community up there. But uh, so you came to L.A. Was it an, an immediate uh, pickup of work? Who was your agent? How did how did that work out? Right. So um, it was actually I, I was still at that time. Uh, I was getting work uh, through Tonry, uh, my agent. Oh, so end of, end of that story was that I after being at Look and being at Best and um, being at a couple of other, uh, you know, big San Francisco agents, I ended up at Tonry and because we just gelled. And so she was my agent for 25 years. And, you know, I came to her in the very beginning and I said, Mary, it's a numbers game. You send me out for everything, you know, anything possible within my sphere. Um, I'll get you work. I promise you I'll get you work but you got to send me out all the time. And she said, wow, a business person, not somebody who was like, I, I just want to apply my trade. I, I love acting so much. No, I was, you know, I was like, Hey, I want to make money. You want to make money. Let's do this. And she did. And, uh, it worked out beautifully up there. I was, you know, I'm not going to go into it too much, but I was, uh, I did over 70 national television commercials, um on camera and so that really you know helped things going and then when she said hey there's this uh, new thing called video games would you like to be in those <laughs> i said yeah let's give that a sure, try whatever and because, i'm a businessman yeah right sure, you know it, it's interesting that. it's interesting david um that you mentioned that that she said you're a businessman uh because i think so many of us especially those of us who've been in the business for a while didn't necessarily come into the business thinking of ourselves as business people. I certainly did not. I came in the business. I'm an artist. I'm a voice actor. Um, I I want to apply my trade. Uh, I'll have an accountant and so forth and so on to take care of it. 
But we're in a world now where, well, you're still probably going to have an accountant. Um, but <laughs> you're in a world now where you have to promote yourself or you have to consider yourself a business. And uh, that puts yep, you that steps ahead. You bet it does. And, you know, whereas before your agent was your business person for you, um, you know, today uh, a voiceover uh, voice actor is lucky if, you know, half of their income is coming from an agent and the rest of it has to be coming from someplace else. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess us, you know, dinosaurs and stuff, we, we, we set our pace so early that our agents can fulfill what we need. But for most people, um, they need to be business people and they need to start self-promoting and marketing. They need to get their name out on their own. They need to find other audition streams beyond just an agency representation. Um, agency representation should be in this day and age, if you can get there, it should be a goal, but you don't, but you can be a business person without an agent and make a living doing voiceover. I, I know many people who I've helped yeah. do that. Um, and if you're lucky enough to get an agent, that means that you are probably lucky enough to get two or three, um, because somebody has recognized what you can do. And then it's important for you over time to move on to like a Midwest agent and an East coast agent, um, so that you can pick up the regional proprietary work. That's not just every, you know, all the stuff that comes to everybody these days. And, and you know, I've yeah. also found uh, that yes, when you have multiple agents in different locations, uh, there's going to be some overlap. That's but, what I'm talking about. Yeah. But if you're, if you've got an agent in New York, there's going to be some New York things that LA people yes. are never going to see some Atlanta things that LA people are never going to see. And that makes a big difference. And, uh, one of the things I've learned uh, over the years is not every agent handles all the things that you might want to do. Uh, That's true. I have talked to people who have agents and they've come to me for training uh, in video games. And I say, well, is your agent getting you out there? How many auditions are you getting? Well, you know, my agent doesn't really do the video game thing. so mm. And it's like, well, you, you're going to need to start shopping for a new agent. And when you're looking to get an agent, don't be so excited uh, that, oh, uh, this agent's interested in me, that you don't ask the right questions. You want to find out, does this agent even cover the things that I want to do? Not every agent does. So true, Dave. And, you know, I think everybody's so, <laughs> one thing you don't want to do as a business is look desperate. <laughs> um, <laughs> And there are plenty of plenty of people doing it the wrong way out there where they are so desperate to get an agent as if somehow that validates them as a voice actor um, that, uh, you know, that all of a sudden um, you're you're going on, you're you're peddling yourself in a way that is less than it. You're creating a hierarchy between the agent and yourself and you're really equals. Yes. You're uh, business you know, partners. Exactly. And so just to have an agent, I mean, I could tell you stories about people that, you know, they were just dead set on getting this boutique agent or that boutique agent, you know, just hammered away. And after maybe two years, you know, wore somebody down to the point where they said, okay, sure, I'll take you on. Um, and then they plastered it all over the, you know, the socials because now they were legitimate, now they were validated, and they only got like six auditions in, in, in a year from this person, from the, and I said, is that, was that worth it? Was that really worth it, what you went through? Mm. I, you know, the thing is, the thing about finding an agent, it, it, there are a couple of things. I know from being with one for 25 and have had him trying out a number of them beforehand, um, was you got to have a good relationship. Um, it, when you have a good relationship, uh, as both, it's kind of becomes a business friendship, right, Dave? Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, and, uh, and you're equals, and there needs to be the ability to 
reach out and talk to your agent when you need to, not to be a pest, but that they're that they're open to that, that they're on the same page as you, that they understand that you want to do video games, right? Well, one, of and, the thing, one of the things you mentioned when you uh, got that agent and uh, you said, hey, look, send me out for stuff, I'm going to book. Uh, it showed that you were a businessman and you want to do what you need to do. I think uh, often people get an agent and then they don't do things like ask the agent, what tools do you need uh, to help me help you get me work? Uh, or, That's it. Oh, gee, I've got an agent now. I don't want to bother them. You know, no, you're not mm -hmm. bothering them. You're not bothering them. <laughs> but you also don't right. want to be that, that, that actor, that, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I, you know, I thought I'd call you today. You know, I, I know I called yesterday, but it's three o'clock every day about a good time. <laughs> right. We, we don't want to right. be that no. person either. Let me ask, let me ask you this. Uh, you had mentioned uh, just a few moments ago about social media and that person got an agent and then they spread. What are the mistakes you think voice actors are making in using their social media? What could they do better? Well, um, I would say there are a number of things that they could do better. Um, no, nobody should be putting up every single job that they do <laughs> because that, first of all, that feels desperate. It also reeks of insecurity. Like, uh, I'm, you know, I still rate, I still rate, I'm still, you know, relevant here. Look at this. I just did this. Um, I look at it and I don't know how you feel, but I look at it as a as a, a job, a wonderful job where I get to play and I get to have a fantastic time. But at, at the end of the day, you know, uh, it's what I do. And I don't need to be, you know, if there's a first job that you get. Uh, yeah, that would, that would go be. On, that would be one of those things. If there is, if you have always wanted to be on uh, a, a Disney major film or television show and you get your first job, yes. There are milestones that are important to you that you can, that is that are worth uh, crowing about for a minute and then you get on with the job. But I often tell people, you know, a plumber, you know, goes about his job every day doesn't post every oh I, I put a great U two U pipe here today and it was just perfect and and then the the other day you know I had to go out to the main and put a you know no you know they they go about their business and and they do it well uh, but they don't need to chime in about everything and and I think that 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 reeks of of insecurity and desperation there are moments when you can do that, when you can tout, toot your horn and that's great but be uh, um, you know, be thoughtful and mindful about how you do that. Another now, thing a, a is... A fellow I know uh, a number yeah. of years ago um, started posting pictures of checks. Oh! And oh, I, 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 I was appalled. And I, I just... Yeah. Dude, no, no. Uh, and, and, and I think it's... I like to know sometimes somebody, oh, well, I'm, I'm doing this gig that... Um, at this studio that I've never worked before, or I'm over here again, yeah. or gee, look, they've got my name on the uh, in the parking lot. Of it. Uh, yeah, I sure. like to let people sure. see me in places from time to time. Also, you can't <clears throat> talk about the job that you're doing, right? Um, right. But I have cautioned some friends of mine from time to time that look, uh, every now and then post you're at this studio you're doing this you're doing that uh but don't post every job one mm -hmm. it'll be and the thing that you're trying to do which is uh share with people and you know they'll turn on you mm -hmm. oh they so will. now you're bragging mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. be careful of uh you know waving your flag too strongly Right. I would also say um, uh, stay away from politics in VO. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's interesting. I tell people that, too, although I I feel like, well, I'm further enough along in my career. I'm going to well, do what I want to do. Right. 
Uh, but when right. you're starting out, uh, and that, and, and I don't want, I wouldn't want people to think I don't want you to be honest. Mm-hmm. But as my mom used difference. to, as my mom used to say, everybody don't need to know everything. Hmm. Hmm. And and I think it's really important. I mean. I don't mean don't do political commercials. I, I don't need. No, I don't no. mean that. No, no, no. Talking about but, your own personal uh, politics. It, exactly. You know. And I, and you're going to, you know, I, you know, I, one of the things it's, it's the politics should never get in the way of doing a good job and sharing in a project. And, you know, I mean, if I find out afterwards that I had a fantastic time with somebody who has, you know, completely the opposite <laughs> political views that I do, I'm excited about that. I'm not like, oh, I should have not. I'm excited that we were able to come together on a wonderful yeah. project and and create some magic and and find our similarities rather than our differences. Yeah. But people, I think people are are angry out there. I think that they're frustrated. I think that they're irritable. I think that a lot of people are working out of fear. And so it's very all you have to do. I mean, that powder keg is just ready to go off, right? Yeah. All somebody has to do is post one little thing and it's off to the races. Oh my gosh. I would rather find what we can share, uh, uh, the joy that we can share, the the work that we can share, the play that we can share, no matter what. And that's the way I think we're all going to survive, frankly. It, so, you know, so, so basically what David is saying, don't do what I do, which I, I post politics <laughs> all over my page, but I've been at this a long time. Um, uh, it's not, if it's affecting me, I haven't found out about it yet. Um, right. You know, but people, people, <laughs> people that were, you know, people are very tender now uh, about things, but I, I feel I've been around long enough. Sometimes I think. I rather let the world know uh, some opinions than not, but I'm not recommending it for everybody. No, and and you know, I I, I think it's an important time to have a voice. Uh, I think you know, in terms of voicing what's super important to you, keeping our democracy alive, et cetera, all that kind of stuff. Believe me, I I feel passionately and strongly about that, but I'm not gonna offer it up in a in an environment where it where it can again it can be a powder keg that sets everybody off and puts people at odds with each other i'm not that i you know i don't i don't want that now if somebody personally asked me i'd be happy to tell them how i feel um and if you want to have a civil conversation with me i am happy to do that um well, I have, that's, you know, that's one of the problems now is, you know, uh, right. I don't, you remember KBLX up North, and, oh, yeah. uh, the news oh, yeah. guy that used to say, if you don't like the news, go out and make some of your own. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> unfor- <clears throat> excuse me, unfortunately, we have even news outlets making up some of their own. Oh, it's, you bet. It's one thing, uh, we can have our own opinions, but at some point we have to be able to agree on a set of facts. And unfortunately, um, that doesn't seem to be the case right now. Um, I uh, whoa, I didn't mean to get to that yet. Um, <laughs> I got a couple. I got a question here. Uh, who's the Who's the wizard behind the screen? <laughs> you know, me pushing all the buttons. <laughs> which, which is why sometimes. Whoa, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, D. F. Raisin. Uh, hello, David. As someone still new to the video industry, what would be three crucial pieces of advice you would give me from the start? Okay, so. Um, Great. This is a great question. Um, I would tell you that, first of all, you need the time to make this work. You need the effort, meaning that you know, you're know you going to be able to practice on a regular basis and learn and grow in as many ways as possible. You're going to need to have the finances to back it up. Um, and none of and you should be very fiscally responsible about the way that you uh, approach moving forward because you are entering, especially if you're entering uh, uh, from the world of W twos where you're just an employee and you're told what to do, etc. But if you 
um, have never been an entrepreneur entrepreneur before. Um, it's a completely different mindset, a completely different game, and you need to be patient. You need to have perseverance, but you do need to have the money to back it up because it's going to involve investment to get to where you want to go. And if you do not, you're going to need to be, it's not enough to be a voice actor anymore or voice actress. You need to be a professional voiceover business because all the people that have the potential to bring you work uh, through uh, auditions, etc., agents, casting directors, production houses, recording studios, other voice actors. Uh, you know, it, when when it's time to open up your doors for business, they want to work with a professional business. They want to work with somebody who is a professional, not only as a voice actor, but has a professional studio can. Uh, do 24 to 48 turnaround. Uh, our turnaround knows what uh, the different files are and how to send them, knows how to be professional and yet lighthearted and help help along a, uh, a particular project or, or gig when you're voicing live and be source connect ready. I'm telling you stuff that probably is way beyond what you asked in terms of the question, but um, those people that I just told you about, they're all looking for a reason to dismiss you. So if you do not give them one because you are doing everything so mindfully and joyfully and methodically and professionally, they're going to say, oh, my God, you're the real deal. We have to pay you commensurately and you're going to be an essential part of our project. You want that, obviously. You you so, want you want to be the the solution to their issues their problem, right? We need right. somebody and that can tell this story, uh, and and not cause us any headaches. Oh, exactly. He's on time. He sounds great. The equipment is is perfect. Uh, he understands right. uh, how to be directed. Um, he's he's not causing problems by talking too much about this, that, and the other when we really need to. He's not trying to tell funny jokes that really aren't funny. You know, all, got all, the, all those kids. <laughs> they say that right. for hanging with your boys. Um, right. Let's see. So there's, Whoops, I I'm think sorry. that was three. Back to it. I think that was three things. I don't know. Yeah. But, um, I, yeah. I would also say that um, you, you need to approach this with uh, a real sense of play. I think play is essential. Uh I always tell my clients voiceover is not about getting things right. It's about getting things true. Uh, right is the uh, realm of the, of the chatterbox mind, uh, getting it perfect, getting it right. Um, and true is the realm of the heart and the body. Uh, voiceover is very much a body oriented business. And if because emotionally, that is where you're coming from. And if you can let go of this in order to get to this, uh, life is going to be a lot easier. You know, I think everybody grows up thinking they're supposed to be right. And so if they do things in a very particular way, right, then it's all going to work out fine. Uh, you, you'll get the A in school. You'll get the pat on the head, right? That is not what a casting director is looking for. They're looking for creative imagination, professionalism, yes, but creative imagination, uh, the ability to move outside the box, something that almost every actor needs to do in order to survive these days. Um, knowing what that is and knowing what that razor's edge is between going too far and not far enough. I mean, there's... Yeah, there's so many different aspects to 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 it. Um, but and and, I, and and along with that, going too far or not too far, or taking it right to the where it needs to be. Also, you need to keep up with the trends mm -hmm. because how we voice things now is not how we voiced them ten years ago. Was not how we voiced them twenty years ago. And it's changing all rapidly. The time now rapidly. Oh yeah. So and, being on top of that. I, I, I'm going to say one of the things that some people may find uh, uh, the fact of inclusivity uh, mm -hmm. 
doesn't mean the pie is smaller or that you're going to work less, but you are now in competition with everybody. Uh, I see commercials now that come. It could be male or female. I see game roles that we don't care, male, female, uh, binary, whatever. Just be able to play this part. Bring something to this part. Uh, so you're in competition yeah. with everybody. And that's, I love that. I yeah. think oh, that yeah. is the way it should be. Yeah. I mean, that, that what that does is it keeps you on your game. Uh, because, you know, you can't afford to, you know, rest on your laurels anymore. There are, there are a lot of hungry, wonderfully creative actors out there. And so it keeps you on your game. It keeps you fresh. It, it lets you know that there's this wonderful pool that you can still be a part of. Um, but not if you're going to like, you know, just phone it in. This, so. this is very much a, what have you done for me lately kind of business. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it Let's is. See. Right? I, I got, I got a, a long question here. I haven't pre-read the whole thing, but he usually has decent questions. Richard Lou Hoff Jr. Both you suggested to steer clear of sharing your political leanings is reassuring. I see many folks in indie sector uh, lead with this. I personally have no interest in doing this, and it's good to know a career can be cultivated without planting flags of the political variety. You know, I'm, I'm going to say um, when I first started, uh, I did not want to be viewed as just a black voice. Uh, I'm happy to do all the ethnic work in the world, uh, but I insisted with my agents, look, I want to do some of everything. Uh, and I felt like I needed to do that uh, because all too often uh, the default position is, oh, the black guy, he's, he, well, he does black stuff. Uh, yeah, I will. I want to do everything else too. Um, so, yeah, after doing this for 35 years, um, I, I can take some leeway and you know, talk politics on my Facebook page. Uh, but I don't. As is your want. Yeah, as you is my want. But I, I, I don't. You've... I don't necessarily recommend it. Um, I'm gonna pull up this picture here and let's let's talk about uh uh gvaa um i, I can dress you are up the, good you are the I ceo think. what's that i can dress up good when i want to oh yeah you are oh you were looking good that <laughs> night um you are the ceo of gvaa uh the global mm -hmm. voice over acting academy um now i know uh christina Malizia began it uh mm -hmm. her career started to take off you became a member and because you have a, a business background you suggested hey uh you do your thing let me help with this what did you do uh that made gvaa uh, such a strong force in our business yeah so thank you for that i um you know gvaa was started uh, because Christina and I saw a desperate need to um, create community within the voiceover world uh, uh, as soon as everybody uh, the pandemic hit and everybody was isolated in their booths. Um, we both grew up in that environment just like you did, Dave, where you know you'd go to uh, you'd go to a live voiceover audition, you'd go to your agent. Um, there was built-in community there, uh, and so we felt that, especially with the uh, once the uh, pandemic hit, uh, that we needed to be there uh, for 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 everybody. Uh, and um, her uh, Christina's uh, career was just exploding at that time, and. I was a uh, coach and uh, kind of a mentor for her in a way at the same time. I was a coach at GBA and I said, you know, you've got an amazing career going here and you're juggling too many balls. I want you to go and I want you to just enjoy the fact that you're, you know, she, she worked at this, by the way, for 18 years before she became overnight uh, a regular 
wonderful working actress. And, and that's, in, in that's so world. true of so many very successful people. We don't see it's that iceberg under the ocean uh, right. of work that we don't see. And then the, I, we see the tip of it. Oh, man, look, it's so great. It's an overnight <laughs> sensation. No, 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 no. Been working a long time. No, no. Yeah, oh, yeah. And, it, you know, it took me seven years to give up my other job before I could do all this full time. Um, and, but, you know, people who are passionate about it, people who love it and know that if they keep at it, uh, that kind of thing can happen, even if it takes 18 years. But anyway, she, she, I told, she was more than happy to go and do that. And so, um, you know, I took a look at what was important, uh, about GVAA to the, com uh, VO industry and the VO community. And I just kind of like moot, um, took it a little bit further in terms of creating a membership that um, would be together every month, working out, uh, being parts of Q&As, uh, help, you know, getting together. A lot of the members end up being in an accountability groups together, helping each other with uh, gigs and, and uh, referring other people. So our member, I wanted to make sure that our membership grew, which it is, and we'll continue now. I'm really grateful for that. Um, it's a it's a wonderful training ground because it's a very nurturing, supportive, very fun environment to learn your craft. Um, especially when it's so daunting. A lot of people come into this craft and they 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 can be so easily misled. There are a lot oh of oh boy, yeah, they're out there. they're oh they're yeah, a lot of shysters and, out there. You know, and so uh, it was really. Go ahead. I was going to say one of the things um, that even before I knew exactly what uh, GVAA did, um, I discovered the the rate sheet. Mm -hmm, and the rate I've been using yeah. the GVAA rate sheet for a long time. I have students that may not be in the union, uh, just getting their career started. They don't know what to charge. And this is the kind of business we love it so much. Uh, we are very prone uh, to do the work for much less than we should be charging, uh, and especially if we don't know. And uh, that GVAA rate sheet is a wonderful guide of, of how you should charge for your business. Thank you. And actually, uh, we just uh, did an update for all of animation. Uh, and uh, we're actually doing a, uh, a free webinar tomorrow to update everybody on as to what that is and what it looks like now in the rate guide and what the changes are. Um, uh, so yeah, we're constantly updating that. David and I are now knee deep in the commercial aspect of it and uh, soon to be the digital aspect uh, because everything's going digital and now everything is, you know, people want to pay in terms of millions of impressions instead of regions and all sorts of stuff. So we're, we're trying to be, you know, clear as possible uh, so that people have still have a wonderful outline to, to go off of when they're uh, trying to negotiate on their own. Uh, our members get free rate and negotiation advice. Uh, that's part of what GVA does. It's not free to non-members. We charge for that, but, um, you know, that's one of the benefits of membership. But um, yeah, you know, Christina, I think she st she was starting with her own rate sheet and then realized, you know, well, is this is this really what's what's out there? Is this what's getting uh, charged? And and so she did some uh, initial recon work out there and saw that this was a much larger thing than she probably wanted to get into on her own. And we had just brought uh, Toback on, David Toback, and and kind of handed the ball to him uh and he ran with it man he and he has uh he's just been a joy to work with um and he is a wealth of knowledge in that area um there's always more to learn there's always more to know um but you know we're gva is a company based on integrity honesty transparency and maintaining a huge knowledge base and resource so that people can create businesses for themselves that will succeed.
that will give them an income. And you can't do that if, uh, if you don't know what you're doing as a business, don't know what you should be charging as a business, don't know how to represent yourself as a business. So that's what we're doing these days. We, as I, you know, one of the things that's happening in the next few months is we're doing a, a huge rebrand of our business and our website to represent what we truly are, which is a company that helps other people create professional voiceover businesses. We don't just train, you know, give them this kind of one size fits all training leading up to a demo and then goodbye, good luck. It doesn't work that way, but you know, that's what we're trying to fight against. We're trying to let people know, no, that is when you put your business hat on. That is when we get to work. That is when you start to understand social media marketing. That is when you have to understand uh, email blasts and how to network connect on LinkedIn without pissing people off. And how are you going to brand yourself? What does that look like on a website? How are you going to represent yourself to agencies? Do you want to go regional? Do you want to go local? Do you want to go national or international? Does your demo work as a marketing tool for that particular business model? If you do a international products and you're marketing locally, they're not going to care. They're going to go, well, I don't, I don't know what that is. But if you, so we actually talk about branding your demo to the way in which you're going to use it as a marketing tool to benefit the business model that you have. I mean, I, I could talk for hours there. I, 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 apparently. <laughs> and, and, you know, uh, I knew you guys were doing some great stuff, um, but you just, you know, opened the door on it much wider. Uh, man, bravo. Bravo. Yeah. Thank and, you. And what, one of the things I like that you talked about is it's it's constantly updating because mm -hmm. the business is constantly changing. How it was when you and I started in the business, uh, I mean, it's almost unrecognizable now, except we actually still talk into microphones with words <laughs> on a page or a screen. Right. Uh, but so many mm -hmm. jobs exist now that didn't exist then. I remember when I heard about audiobooks huh mm -hmm. uh, oh remember when they were books on tape books on tape yeah <laughs> yes yes uh yeah just amazing just amazing well let me ask you this um in your transition are you doing more voiceover work now or are you doing more directing and casting right so you know i i got to a point i i you know, I was so fortunate. Um, I really got to uh, experience almost everything I wanted to uh, in my life as a voice actor. And um, when I started uh, GV, uh, working at GVAA and became a regular coach, um, I also started coaching, uh, doing audition prep as a regular coach for a number of voice actors who work regularly in the industry. And they would always, you know, they'll come to me for really important auditions, uh, you know, just just to make sure that they're on the right page. One of the most exciting things for me now is when they call up and they go, I can't believe it. I got the job. I got that. that. You know, that the thing that that we had just worked on that we just co that I just coached them on it two days before they're now they've got it. Um, and for me, that joy, that excitement is something that I felt at the beginning of my career and into the middle of my career. Um, but I have to say, you know, at a certain point when my agent would say, uh, hey, hey, you booked this. And I'd go, great, thanks. And it just didn't happen. <laughs> I, I realized that I wasn't jumping up and down anymore. You know, uh, I, wasn't, I didn't have the same kind of joy. But being a coach and seeing somebody go all the way from training to demo to home studio, to website, to opening up their doors, to getting agency representation and booking, I can't tell you how overjoyed I am. That makes me happier than almost anything these days because I know that somehow my spirit and my energy and my knowledge 
are helping fuel the careers of new voice actors uh, who need to be in this business. Their, their voice needs to be heard. Everybody's voice needs to be heard. That's my feeling. And if I can help their voice get heard, um, I get to put a smile on my face when I go to sleep at night. Well, there you go. There you go. Hmm. Um, how can people get in touch with you if, uh, well, I guess VA, uh, uh, GVAA. GVAA. So, yeah. So the, uh, if you, anybody, by the way, at GVAA, we give anybody and everybody a free 15 minute consultation. Um, whether you're just getting, thinking about whether this makes sense to you, uh, or not, or you want to know what's ahead of you and nuts and bolts, time wise, uh, practice wise, finance wise, you know, we're there to make sure that you're being fiscally responsible about moving forward with your business, that you understand how to do this uh, well, and that, you know, we don't want you spending money on anything you don't need to be spending money on. But we do want you to be spending the right amount of money on the things you do need to be spending money on. And so, you know, everybody has a budget and we want to work with that and see, you know, what's possible with your budget, what's not possible with your budget and and be realistic with you as you move forward. Um, but that 15 minute consultation is good for anybody. It's also good for I just did one for uh, a big pro today who needed some marketing uh, help after all this time uh, because you know, he's well, you know, we're, we're not all, we're not all experts at marketing. I exactly. the first one to say I, I, I'm not an expert at it. And how we market these days is very different than how we marketed before. And actually, even the big pros of marketing are having problems uh, because how do we reach the audiences that we need to reach? Because people right. of a certain age ain't watching television it's tiktok it's youtube it's a whole other platform that there are oh how do we get to them uh the whole idea of the number of people doing a tiktok thing a, a, a youtube thing and somehow oh yeah uh they are making money because so many people are watching that advertising and <laughs> but you know dave you don't have to be everything to everybody True that. You know what we do at G what we do at GVAA is we help people find their lane, a lane that they can feel good about, strong about, have fun waking up in the morning and and addressing every day. Yeah. Um, if, if somebody is like, you know, I can't stand TikTok, I'm going great. You're not going to be on it. You're going to be doing this instead, right? Because this is something you told me you actually like doing this. Yeah. So there are that's the nice thing is that you sh i mean most people that come into voiceover they're doing it not because they want to work more and resent having to <laughs> yeah. do this marketing thing more this that's is supposed to be the lazy man's way to riches <laughs> right is am i telling you that right so so what i'm tell what i'm saying is that um uh, if We'll, we will work with you to find the, the way that brings you joy when you wake up in the morning to be able to say, I've got a VO business and I'm going to make it happen. Um, that's what we want. And there's a different path for everybody. Everybody is going to have their own desires, their own budget, their own time frame, their own talent, their own natural talent, their own time to learn it's very individual. And, and as soon as we know who these people are um, and our coaches are the best at understanding who these people are and how to address their particular path, um, then everybody's off to the races and having a great time. Now, the way that you can get in touch with us is, um, well, my, uh, our website is globalvoiceacademy.com. Uh, it's not global voice acting academy, com because that's a little too long, a little too it's long, global voice academy.com. If you want a free, uh, you can get in touch with me at David Rosenthal at global voice, academy, uh, global voice academy.com. David Rosenthal at global voice academy.com. And I, and I will be happy to have a 15 minute with you 
and um, you know, talk about what you want to talk about. If you're somebody who's been doing this for 10 years, then we'll talk about one thing. If you're just getting started, we'll be talking about something different. It's, it's, it's not a canned uh, conversation. Oh, uh, heck no. Hey, and we got I, a couple, and, you know, couple, we, couple comments here. Uh, one yeah. hello from uh, V Worldwide. Good evening, gentlemen. I think that's voiceover worldwide. Uh, <laughs> yeah, also, uh, Lonnie Manella. Uh, the latest tiered SAG after VO contract for indie devs came out of nowhere. Uh, don't know. Wait, let's see. Am I missing a word there? Don't know. Um, uh, don't know how devs will know or volunteer their total game budget. Uh, the first tier is from five hundred thousand to a million. Um, yep. <laughs> interesting. That, that's a long conversation. That's a long conversation, but. I brought it up because I think it's something that uh, needs to be mentioned. People need to see and begin to think about. Um, uh, Rishu Luhoff Jr. again, the GVAA rate guide is extremely well respected. It circulated all over Twitter. Uh, question, is it better to learn VO from working actors or casting directors? Good question. Who does the GVAA have to do the most teaching? Very good. Question. So, uh, yeah, it is. Um, Rishalu, we um, actually were very, very fortunate. Uh, our coaching and our, our staff consists of working voice actors, casting directors, agents. We have agents doing coaching um, and, and they are part of our regular workouts that members get to do. And then they're available for one-on-one -on -one coaching through GBA as well. We acknowledge that working actors, uh, you know, have their pulse on what's going on from behind the mic. I, as a casting director, and Kristen Piva, who came from Disney, and uh, so a couple of other people that and we just have, came from uh, Disney. They, right. I mean, we're talking months months ago. And I'm so grateful that she wanted to come on board with us. She's she's awesome. She's a force to be reckoned with, and um, uh, and she knows what she's talking about. But uh, you know, so you're getting coaching from people on the other side uh, of the mic. You're getting you're get, you're in, getting in the, perspectives uh, from every angle. You're getting the act the other the actor's perspective. You're getting the casting director's perspective. Uh, you're also getting the, you're also did. getting directors' perspectives. I know a right. lot of the people who are teaching for GVAA, and many of them are people who have directed me uh, mm -hmm. in in various aspects mm -hmm. of, of voiceover. Got another question I wanted to pop up here. Uh, Lyle McCarty, uh, hi David. Uh, so he's talking to you, not me. Uh, does GVA have an opinion <laughs> on media ownerships downsizing their staffs, departments, and going cheap? or lowballing for their promos, commercial production work, et cetera, especially local media? Yeah, you know, this it's a problem that's happening everywhere. I mean, this isn't just, uh, this is everywhere right now. Um, you know, for, it, it's a tough time in, uh, for businesses in the United States. And uh, I, you know, it's really hard because they're trying to uh, stay afloat. They're trying to stay relevant. They're trying to make a turn a profit. Um, the problem is, is that it's affecting everybody downline as well. Um, our job uh, at GVAA is to try to help people understand how voice actors create tremendous value that can add up in dollar amounts to these, uh, you know, mid-sized shops and local shops and stuff like that. Um, and I think we're doing a very good job at it. The, the problem is, is that you have a lot of, a lot of young, well, I don't know how young they are anymore, but compared to me, they're, <laughs> they're young little whippersnappers, but, um, you have a lot of young people coming into the business now, um, who grew up where there was a free app for everything, right? So why am I paying for this? And why am I paying for that? But as soon as you educate them and they're more than willing to listen and talk, especially if you're nice about it, you're not trying to school them, you know, you're trying to bring them up and tell them how their businesses are going to actually work really well. They listen, but it is an education every day. It is a job to get in there and 
lift them up and tell them, hey, you don't know about this, but you're going to get so much value from this and you won't have, I mean, I could tell you stories about people that tried to circumvent all that and, uh, you know, it didn't work out for them. Yeah. So they well, you ended know, up I'm, coming back. Uh, we're, we're about here where we want to wrap it up. A couple of things uh, that came to mind when you were just uh, mentioning that, um, how often people are just trying to get something for free, uh, get our work for free, the AI voices big issue that we are, are dealing with now. I just saw a thing on public schools where there are some billionaires uh, who have oh, yeah. computer systems that they'd like to get rid of teachers and just have students in a room with screens and speakers uh, learning, supposedly learning that way. And the idea is to cut the costs. Let's just cut the costs. It's the, and it, that's and I, the end I'll, of education. Yeah, I always find it amazing that, that the people with the most money are the ones who are trying to cut the cost that supports everybody else. It's, that's why the rich stay rich. <laughs> 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 you know, they're all... It's true. You know, unfortunately, they rich, you know, people, you know, tremendous wealth creates a certain kind of uh, uh, narcissistic power, sense of power, and they just want to keep it rolling. I dealt with that as a financial advisor for many years with my clients and the hardest people to work with were the richest because they they were your you were their best friend when you were making them money. But my God, the market goes down and they are, it's a personal affront. And what the heck do you think you're doing with this money? I was, I couldn't get away from them fast enough. The people who <laughs> were, you know, people who were the, you know, the steady $25, $50 a month, I'm going to put away in my IRA. They were ideal. They were wonderful to work with. But yeah, so I hear you. I don't, I mean, education has, has been, you know, getting it on the chin for these decades days and for decades yeah oh and it's sad it's sad yeah you know well anyway. uh but let's let's end on a high note the high note yeah. is you uh vgaa um voiceover and all the information that you were able to share the insights today uh david uh once again uh We've been acquainted for a long time. We've been friends. But I got to learn some things. Again, this is what happens every week. One of the reasons I love yep. doing this, I get to learn so much uh, from the people I've been friends with for so long that just didn't know about them. Yeah, yeah. So I can't wait to hang out with you some more. Oh, let, oh, let's do it. We're, let's let's do it. Yeah. You know, we'll we'll get the girls yeah. together and uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll double date. <laughs> I'll double That's date. We'll do. All okay. right, I'm I'm gonna let you go. Uh, and you. I I just want to thank David Rosenthal again. So much great information. You never know exactly what you're gonna get when you uh, drop in for Ask Dave Fenoy anything, because <laughs> you're asking not just me but lots of other wonderful people. If you tuned in late or you want somebody to uh, check this out, they had some information you heard that you want to share, you can stop by uh, Dave Fenoy voiceover training on YouTube. That's my YouTube channel. All the Ask Dave Fenoy Anythings live there. Uh, 24-7, 365, you can check them out. If you want to do coaching with me, somebody asked uh, in a question there, do I still do coaching? Of course I still do coaching. Go to DaveFanoy.com. You can click on the Study VO tab at the top and book yourself for one, five, 10, uh, 20 sessions. Uh, and you can follow me on Twitter at DaveFanoyVO. Once again, uh, big ups, big thanks to David Rosenthal. And for those of you out there, you know what I'm going to tell you to do? Book something. See ya. <laughs>